Doc Talk is brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, Sure Trace Mineral Supplementation by Timed Injection. Hi there, folks. Welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. I'm sure glad you joined us today. We're going to have a great show. Dr. Mike Apley is going to join us. He's a clinical pharmacologist in the Department of Clinical Sciences, and we're going to talk about bovine respiratory disease, some of the things that are going on currently and some of the things in the future. Thanks for joining us. Multiman is one of those products you can use to uh, get the ultimate uh, performance out of cattle. Around 90 to 95% of our calves are uh, either AI or embryo transplant. Uh, since we've started using the Multiman, we're up around 70 to 75% uh, conception on our first AI service. And a product like this is very beneficial for us. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Normycin LA, Normectrum Plus, 1% and Poron, the practical choice for your herd. Welcome to the show. Thanks. Great to have you here, folks. This is Dr. Mike Apley, and he is a clinical pharmacologist here at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine, and he is a bovine practitioner and has done Tours in veterinary practice, uh, both in a mixed animal practice in South Central Kansas and, or Central Kansas, and then feedlot veterinary consultant out of Greeley, Colorado, and been around quite a bit, both in academia and the industry. Recently named one of the uh, top 20 most influential veterinarians in the United States for, for beef and dairy cattle. Great to have you here. Thanks. So today we're going to talk about bovine respiratory disease. We're going to talk about, um, you know, it's the most common killer of cattle and we're going to talk about it uh, first of all just what is it and how does it happen. Respiratory disease we'd know it as pneumonia. Uh, about every species of mammal gets some kind of infection like this that can happen and in cattle it's a combination of viruses and bacteria plus we put a little stress with that and here we are. Cattle are, are at a disadvantage anyway and at only about a third of the air they breathe in. Mm -hmm gets to a place in their lung that can actually exchange oxygen and CO2. If a human takes a deep breath, about two-thirds of what we breathe in gets down to that exchange area. So cattle are starting out at a disadvantage anyway. And then we come in with the pathogens, the viruses, the bacteria that can team up. For example, most people will know about red nose or IBR. And one of the things it does is the hairs in the trachea, our airway that move debris back up. Yep. It can paralyze those, wipe them out, and then we've got an open pathway down. So, so very, it doesn't, very allow the, doesn't get the mucus clearance yeah. out of the, the trachea and that mucus can slide on down with yep. the bacteria. And the tricky thing too is that if we go culturing noses of calves, we'll find out that the bacteria that causes pneumonia is there already. It lives okay. in their nose, it lives back in their tonsils, <clears throat> and then when the stress comes it can overwhelm. Yeah, I always say there's two reasons why an animal or people get sick, either stress that, that depresses the immune system or an overwhelming dose of a pathogen. Right. And, and when we get the two together, whammo. And also as calves move and meet other calves and go into systems, they may be exposed to a new pathogen that it takes their body a while to adjust to and that's why we go through a lot of preventative measures to try to expose ahead of time. So when we're talking about BRD and we're talking about the setting it up, what are some of the things that, you know, some of those sources of stress that you see? Well, shipping, you know, and we're going to continue to move cattle around this country because it makes sense for them to be in different places at different times during the production cycle, which is why we've evolved this way. But the shipment, uh, weather can do it, not getting feed right, uh, using the wrong vaccine or using something at the wrong time you know, that's why people have developed uh, fence line weaning or ways to leave the calf close to the cow and it's why preconditioning pre systems do so much for us in that they let us slowly bring that calf into time away from its mother to moving on into production. Well, great lead into our discussion today. Appreciate you being here. We're going to discuss this further with Dr. Appley. And we're going to get into some of the clinical signs and when to pull cattle, what to treat them with when to treat them, and, and many more things to come. You're watching Doc Talk. We're glad you joined us. We're going to take a break, and we're going to be back in a minute. 
This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. And by Lalaman Animal Nutrition, dedicated to the development and production of natural and differential solutions for animal nutrition. This hog is head over hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. Dr. Dan here. Whether I'm driving up and down the roads covering the state of Kansas, or I'm getting between Riley and Manhattan for my job, I'm driving a Ford truck. I'd like you to come out and visit my friends here at Dick Edwards Ford. They have a truck that'll suit your needs. Whether you're looking for power with a Power Stroke diesel, or if you're looking for fuel efficiency with the new EcoBoost engine, they got a truck that's just right for you. They're located two miles east of the Town Center Mall in Manhattan, Kansas, and they'll bend over backwards to help you. And I'll see you down the road. Getting ready to work cattle for pre-breeding and calf vaccinations? There's no better time to use a safe, modified live virus vaccine to prevent BRD. Titanium provides the correct equation for BRD with its excellent safety profile and a strong response and long duration of immunity. Ask your veterinarian about modified live virus vaccines and the eight convenient combinations of titanium for the perfect pairing of performance and value. This segment is brought to you by Rotomix, manufactured in the USA and designed for feeding performance in the feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow-calf operations. Hi there folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with my friend and colleague, Dr. Mike Appley, and Dr. Appley is a boarded clinical pharmacologist here at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine in the Department of Clinical Sciences. And we're talking about bovine respiratory disease and we've been talking about it, uh, about the pathogenesis, some of the reasons why we see it. And now let's get into going out into the pen. We've weaned the calves, the new calves have come in, now we're gonna check them for BRD. What are some of the things that you look for in the clinical signs of identifying cattle that aren't doing right? Well, I can tell you about 10 years ago before we started doing some of the research on just how good we are, I would have told you with a lot more confidence, probably. <laughs> All right. But the, the issues are, you know, we're looking at depression, and then we follow up depression with some other type of input, such as temperature. And we can all argue if it's 103.5 or 104, but a lot of us will use around 104. And one of the things I'll encourage you to do is make sure you have an accurate thermometer. I've, I've ran into some testing them against a, a, a calibrated factory mercury thermometer in a water bath that aren't that accurate. Right. Uh, so uh, ask your veterinarian for some help in the ones they like. But we combine depression with temperature and other signs might be a calf that isn't coming up to eat, an obvious really good sign that we need to take a look at them. Uh, one that might be displaying abnormal breathing. Now, it, we're shooting this in the fall and it's, it was 49 degrees this morning and it's gonna be 75 or 80 this afternoon. Those calves are hot when it's 75 or 80 yeah. and they're getting their winter coats so Rapid respiration doesn't necessarily mean they're sick. It's that increased head held out type of activity. But so you get back to you know that old acronym we use DART. Yeah. The depression, anorexia, respiration, temperature. Yeah. Kind of combination and uh, those hollow flanked calves that aren't eating. Right. And and everyone gets comfortable with their own definition and seeing them. And one of the things that I found is uh, you really need to apply that thermometer and use that as yes or no, I will treat them. And, and now we're moving into finding out more about listening to their lungs and right. using that as a way to say yes or no. But some of those calves that look a little punk and aren't hot may be actually having an upset digestive tract or maybe right. coming on too quick. And of course, if you treat those with an antibiotic, you get really good response and we're all geniuses. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Other than we used an antibiotic when we didn't need to. So. And all we need to do is give them a little bit of hay. Yeah. Yeah, so it's really a fine art, and there's a lot of our listeners that are, I'm sure, a lot better at it than me, but it, the big thing is getting to know your animals. You have to know what they look like normal every day, and then when one stands out, why? We used to yeah. match it up, too, with the uh, feeding. And instead of pulling ugly, 
we'd pull sick. The ugly ones would still come and eat, and the sick right. cattle don't eat, and you can right. scoop them out of the back of the Now, bed. and I think that's a really good rule, but sometimes I've gone up and, you know, do you, do you take a calf that's eaten off the bunk, and sometimes you can catch one when you do. Absolutely. Well, um, when we, when we, uh, we're getting up against the break, but when we come back from, from the break, we'll uh, go into some of the things, you know, you do a lot with therapies and, and things to that nature. So when we come back, we'll talk about treatment. Maybe not necessarily what's in the bottle, right. but some of the things we're going to do. How we're going to apply it, yep. How we're going to manage those cattle. Yep. It's great to have you here. It's great to have you here, too. Thanks for joining us today on Doc Talk. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in a minute. Beef producers need a practical choice when antibiotic therapy is required. More than ever, they are reaching for non-prescription Noramycin 300LA from Norbrook. Specially formulated to produce sustained antibiotic blood levels up to four days in cattle, Noramycin 300LA delivers economic, broad-spectrum disease management for pneumonia, shipping fever, pink eye, wound infections, and foot rot. See for yourself why Norbrook's Noramycin 300LA is the practical choice for your herd. Hi, I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern right here on RFD TV. Got cattle? Rotomix manufactures a complete line of energy efficient rotary and vertical feed mixers for feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow calf operations. Our mixers are available with the patented Generation 2 Staggered Rotor, the industry standard for feeding wet rations that include wet distiller's grain. Made in the USA, Rotomix mixers are designed for feeding performance that American cattlemen and dairy producers have come to expect. Rotomix, proud to offer a better mix in less time using less fuel. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Hi there folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Mike Gapley and we both work at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University in the Department of Clinical Sciences and today we are talking about bovine respiratory disease. We've talked about what happens as far as what causes it, the pathogenesis, the viruses, the bacteria. We talked about the clinical signs. Now we're going to pull those cattle in and take a little closer look. What are some of the things that you kind of go through at the, at the squeeze shoot or, or at the time when we bring those calves up to, to kind of manage sick cattle? A plan is the first thing. <laughs> you can't wing it at the shoot. And I've had people tell me they can look at them in the shoot and say whether they need antibiotic A or <laughs> antibiotic B, and I just, yeah, yeah, I just, I appreciate their wisdom and insight, but I'm not able to do that. So the first thing's a plan. If we have calves come in that are sick, they meet our criteria, which we talked about before the break. You gotta have a, a set of criteria. That we are gonna treat these and we're not gonna treat those. And when I see plans fall apart is when we start to make exceptions for individual animals. So we say, ah, yeah, but this one. And so pretty soon, it's just all an exception and you don't have your plan and we can't go back and evaluate it. It's just whatever you got. So what's the, what's the best way to get a plan? Work with your veterinarian. Absolutely. Work with someone with experience and you know, you can talk to your friends and your neighbors and stuff, but I mean, that's what we do here in the college of veterinary medicine is we go over this and we try to get the facts out there where we can really use them. And one of the facts is I'm still waiting for real evidence that something besides an antibiotic makes a big difference at the treatment shoot. And so, if you're worried about what to put with an antibiotic, what not to put with an antibiotic, just worry about the antibiotic. And, and frankly, there's a wide range of effective ones. So we can sit here and argue about drug A versus drug B, but the most important thing is when in the disease process I get it in them. The so earlier the better. The earlier the better. And then the next thing to sit down with your veterinarian with is when do I decide if they need treated again or not? Uh, besides when I first get it in them, the next thing is when do I decide if they need it again? Right. And we're finding out that it's probably longer than we used to think. A lot of our listeners may have grown up in the industry and been used to 
every day and then at day three we switched if they weren't doing right or something and now we've got I don't know if longer duration but we're waiting longer after we treat until we make that decision. I kind of tell you know that when we have those opportunities to treat one two three days in a row versus seven days or once once and then go I kind of relate it back to myself if I was sick and the doctor said now listen I can give you one dose that's good for right. five to seven days or I've got a different treatment that I'm gonna be. I'm gonna have you come in three days in a row, and get a shot, and the case fatality rate's about double. Then I'm I'm gonna probably take the one where I get it once. Yeah. And and the wear and tear on the people and cattle and the shoots and and all those different things. And so the really big point I'd like the listeners to take home is. You do your plan, and then it's about the timing of that plan. It's the biggest thing. Well, it's great information. We're gonna take a break. When we come back. We're going to uh, talk about future and current preventative measures for bovine respiratory disease. You're watching Doc Talk. We're sure glad you joined us, and we'll see you here right after the break. This segment is brought to you by Purple Wave Auction, the easiest, most straightforward way to sell used equipment. Purple Wave. Straight. Simple. Sold. This is Agriculture Today for Kansas State University. Imagine knowing that each time you dine with beef, the quality just continues to get better. That's the goal of cattle producers who have the task of using sound genetics to breed a better burger or steak for the future. Tom Field, professor at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, was a featured speaker at the 2013 K-State Beef Stalker Field Day in Manhattan. So we're going to have to figure out how to use genomics. We're going to have to figure out how to use precision management. We're going to have to be able to trade information more effectively in our, in our supply chain to create products that actually perform to above expectation in a much more consistent manner. And while hide color was a starting place, it's not where we're going to finish, and it, and it won't be good enough in the future. This is K-State Research and Extension. Cow-calf, stalker, and feedlot producers know that effective parasite control improves overall herd performance and profitability. Norbrook offers a comprehensive, economical line of poron and injectable parasiticides for every livestock operation. Consult with your local animal health supplier to set up a program that protects your investment and brings larger cattle checks this fall. See for yourself why the Noromectin line from Norbrook is the practical choice for your herd. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. <music> Jason Lewis. I work here on Division Ranch, uh, north of Strong City, Kansas. We run 500 head of mama cows. We started using Multi-Men about a year ago. We didn't have any problem with health that year. Didn't have to doctor near as many in that pasture. Just the overall appearance was a lot better. And I liked it so well, we'll start using it on everything. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hi there folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Mike Apley, and we work at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University in the Department of Clinical Sciences, where Dr. Apley is a boarded clinical pharmacologist, uh, does a lot of work with food animal pharmacology uh, internationally, and um, does some feedlot veterinary medicine as well, and we're talking about bovine respiratory disease. We've talked about pathogenesis, clinical signs, treatment, therapy, having a plan. What are some of the things that we're doing currently or some of the things we can do down the road with bovine respiratory disease? I think vaccines continue to evolve, and everyone should have a really good plan for vaccines. We, we spend time planning how we might treat them. The vaccine plan is just as important, and if you're receiving calves, the ability to understand what's happened with those calves before you get them, I think is more important than ever. So having a, a clear communication downline, if, if possible, to do that. One of the things I'm really excited about right now is 
we've had a debate for years on whether one of the key causes, Mannheimia hemolytica, many people have noticed Pastorella hemolytica before they change, is, is it contagious or not? And we mentioned earlier about the calf having it up in its nose and right. then it gets sucked down and can overwhelm. But could it be one it picked up from another calf? Can it actually spread? And we're collaborating with some friends in the USDA and uh, some others to actually take a look to genetically characterize the Mannheimia hemolytica isolates and some other pathogens and see if they do move. Uh, we started, animal, yeah, animal. we started at a sale barn, then on arrival and through the feeding period, and trying to actually answer that because it, when you think about it, that's really a big question. Are we dealing with something that's almost an internal issue on that calf, or is there something that they just spread, and there's one really bad one over here that spreads and causes, or else? a different strain with higher virulence and right. than others, or in your uh, area, you know, the residue or the resistance, resistance. antibiotic resistance, and different strains of of bacteria has got to be something that's that's on the forefront of everybody's mind. In a in a small small group of cattle, there are some bacteria that are pretty resistant, and when we run into those, it's not very good for us or the calves. And so we're trying to figure out more about how those might spread and what we can do to not not select for them. Yeah. Um, you know, when you talked about vaccines, and you know, we we vaccinate a lot of times. You know, we call these cattle opportunity cattle or mismanaged yeah. cattle, but really getting that vaccine on board prior to exposure is is hugely important. Yeah, prior to exposure, and then into them at a time when their body isn't thinking about something else like reacting to stress. That they have a really good time period and environment to react to it properly. Yeah, and I think that that's you know, it's kind of like. An, you know, if you do it too late, it's kind of like when you get the flu and mm -hmm. then say, well, I'm going to run down and get the flu shot now. It's, it, the, the, the horse little, is out of the barn yeah, and, and it's, it's too late. Uh, anything else coming down the future? We're, we're about out of time. But. I, think, I think understanding the disease more is really going to help us. An increased emphasis on taking care of those calves right after, uh, right after they're weaned and they just may not need to be shipped for a while. And then continue to see what comes out new and the ability to vaccinate them. Great. Thanks for being here today. You bet. And thank you for watching Doc Talk. If you want to know more about what we do here at Doc Talk or what Mike and I do here at Kansas State University, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. Remember, always work with your local practitioner. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. You've been joining me today on Doc Talk. I appreciate you viewing, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Doc Talk, produced in cooperation with Drovers Cattle Network and Bovine Veterinarian. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. was brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, sure trace mineral supplementation by timed injection. My name's Tim Todd, uh, along with my wife Chris, we own and operate Green Mountain Angus Ranch out of Rygate, Montana. We've been in the Angus business for about 30 years now. We sell about 300, 350 bulls a year. We have a production sale in the fall, November, the third Friday in November and we have a uh, private treaty sale in the spring. We've been using the Multi-Min product for about seven years now. Uh, we started using it uh, off the recommendation of our embryologist. He suggested that we give our recip cows a shot uh, prior to putting embryos in. Uh, we had a real good uh, conception rate that spring and we've been using the product ever since. Uh, this area of Montana can be a little deficient in copper. That's one of the three main uh, minerals in Multi-Min. And so with that, we brought our copper levels in our cattle up to where they need to be. We've seen an increase of uh, five to six percent in our conception rate on our, in our AI program. You start getting 30 to 40 more AI calves uh, in a year. Uh, we're showing a, a huge return by using the product uh, in, that, in those regards. We give our cows a shot of multi-min pre-calving for the immune system of the unborn calf. She will transfer the minerals into the unborn calf through the blood system. When the calf is born, he has a, 
a high level of mineral in his liver, which will help with his immune system. Uh, in our particular operation, we uh, lease a lot of pasture, so it's real important for these cattle to stay healthy. Uh, we don't get the opportunity to, to check them like we'd like to. Uh, uh, the least sickness, the, the least foot rot we have, the better off we are. So uh, with the use of multi-men, uh, that's two of the big benefits we've seen. Healthier cattle, less maintenance.